Hi everyone, welcome back to Beyond Your Knowledge. Today we are going to be reviewing uh, information about the cerebrate versus the corticate posturing. Before I continue, I would like to share with you Philippians 4.19 and says that And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So with that in mind, we can start with the decerebrate versus the corticate posturing. So this basically, it is uh, this decerebrate uh, versus the decorticate, you will see two things. So it is the main thing that we're going to see here is the keywords here is lesion. So lesion. So, but where is going to happen that lesion? Well, so we are going to start, for example, for uh, the the cerebrate. Okay. So here you have the cerebrate, and then here we're going to have the decorticate. So the the cerebrate, you have your cerebral cortex. What do we have? Cerebral cortex. So then we have your um, red nucleus, for example. So then go to the red nucleus. Sorry, it should be red nucleus. So after that, so you stimulate, should be positive, and then flexors. Okay. And so if we have the red nucleus here, so we have another um, nucleus, which is called the vestibular nucleus. So let's just put this in boxes that we, oh man, yeah, just do that, yeah. So let's just put this in small box here. And then a small box here, because we don't want to confuse those two, okay? And then the other is the vestibular nucleus vestibular nucleus is going to do something what do you think it's going to do yeah so if we have one which is already the flexor which is the the red nucleus so this one is going to be the extensors so this is going to be the extensors okay so let's just do here one is going to be the extensors so to do patterns so it will be here positive so extensors that's it now but this one the vestibular nucleus go through through one a, a track which is called the vestibular spinal tract so here vestibulo spinal tract got it now this is the decerebrate I mean, this is the, the, we're going to see the posturing soon, but before we see the posturing, we need to know the, basically the pathway. Remember that this keyword here is lesion for everything. So let me just move this here uh, to put in parentheses because we don't want to get confused when we see the real um, lesion in the place that should be. So now, to see the decorticate posture, we need to see ev everything start again in cerebral cortex. Cerebral cortex. So the cerebral cortex go to where? Go to the red nucleus. Okay. The red nucleus go to do flexors. Okay. So you go here. So, and then you stimulate and we have your flexors. But then we have the other nucleus, which is the vestibular nucleus. You say in both, but you're repeating the same. Yeah, I'm repeating the same because it, it is in the same pathway, but what's changed in this pathway is the, the location of the lesion so that the location of the lesion for example here 
I mean vestibular nucleus is going to be the extensors okay then when we see the lesions in the place so we 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 can know which one is the corticate and posturing let's just mark the lesion right now so if you want to see the decerebrate posturing versus the decorticate posturing the difference first it is the place of the lesion and then the position that the patient is going to have so if you have a lesion between the red nucleus and your flexors so if you have a lesion here so that means that you will not have the flexion so movement so because you have a lesion there so and then the patient so the position of this patient is called the cerebrate okay when you have a lesion between the red nucleus that is right here and the flexor so that means that you cannot flex your 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 um your extremities for example your upper limb extremities so all the time is going to be an extended position so to be more clear i will show you a picture here so this one here this patient has uh this one i'm going to to uh the the this one does the cerebrate position the lesion remember that was between the red nucleus and the flexors okay so that means that you cannot flex so you cannot so you're going to be extended now let's just come back now to the other one which is the decorticate posturing so the decorticate posturing so how does things happen so you the patient is going to have a lesions in the cerebral cortex which is right there what i mark in red so between the cerebral cortex and the red nucleus so that mean that the patient is going to have a decorticate position so who is going to predominate so the flexor predominate in the upper limb so that mean that in this patient the flexors here i will write this note in green so the flexors here predominate in the upper limb okay oh, oh predominate upper limb okay so i will show you the picture which is right here so this one is the corticate so and then the flexures so dominate so you can see the flexions here in the upper limb so and this the lesion is between the cerebral cortex okay and the red nucleus and the red nucleus so the lesions is just right here okay so now now um one more detail um that i didn't write before um was the the i mentioned one track which was the vestibulospinal track which is between the vestibular nucleus and extensors but there is another track which is the rubrospinal track which is here rubrospinal tract now and what do you think is going to predominate in the cerebrate so in cerebrate is going to be predominant yes you are right so the extensors predominate so this one the extensors predominate okay so and then let me just do this in green to here so we don't get confused we'll respond to check okay so just to close so we have two things so the cerebrate versus the corticate okay so I the decerebrate versus the decorticate so here we can see the lesions 
So the corticate, the patient is all the time in flexion, as we can see right here. And so the lesions is between the cerebral cortex and the red nucleus. Now, what is going to be predominant there is going to be the, 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 the flexors predominate in the upper limb because the lesion is between the cerebral cortex and the red nucleus. This is the corticate. And now the decerebrate, so the predominant is going to be the extensor. And the lesions is going to be between the red nucleus and the and 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 the flexor. So for this reason, the patient cannot flex. So which one? Which lesion is more close to the cortex? So uh, the the one that causes the corticate. So for this reason, you can see it as the word said. The corticate comes from the cortex, so it's more close to the cerebral cortex. And and which one um, is more far from the from the cortex is going to be the one that is the cerebrate, which is after the red nucleus. So with that in mind, we can take a break here and remember that that um, that we can do all things through Christ and us. And thank you so much for watching, and God bless you all.